Uh, you said the people have spoken. They wanted another cartridge video. What what are we doing it on today? 7.62. Oh yeah, and that's not gonna be in this one, and he's gonna be upset. 7.62. Let's by 51. By 51. Got it. We'll put that one away. We don't want the commies over here. We want America and their best rifle ever made. Am I right? Let's talk about the max effective range of 7.62 NATO. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about one of my favorite cartridges, if not my favorite cartridge. It's the uh, 7.62 NATO. 7.62 by 51 has been around quite some time, what, like early 50s, somewhere in there. And uh, it was the cartridge that ultimately replaced the 30 out 6 M2 ball, and they just wanted something a little bit lighter, a little bit faster, but 30 out 6 as we all know, like kicks butt, right? Uh, but as we've looked at <laughs> until recently, looked at the course of history within the United States military, we kept kind of like downsizing some of our ammunition uh, because, well, we found that lighter, faster ammunition was very effective, right? I mean, we, we found that this guy right here was just um, not great for what we needed at that point in time. And it, unfortunately, and maybe some of you actually think fortunately, actually the M14 had the shortest service life as the standard issue rifle for the United States warfighter, soldier, right? And we moved to this guy, right? The M16, of course, chambered in 5.56. And we've already done our how effective is 5.56 or what effective range is 5.56, things like that. But today we're here to talk about the, the, the bullet it replaced, but also, too, it kind of didn't because this this is definitely still in service. Actually, the M14, even though it had the shortest service life as a standard issue rifle, actually is one of the longest serving rifles within the United States military. Funny enough, it's still on Navy ships and things like that and uh, ceremonial use. Uh, but anyway, 7.62 NATO. 762 by 51 excellent cartridge. Like I said, one of my favorite. If you go back to that Vietnam era, like the original M59 cartridge, 150.5 grain, uh, you're looking at... A muzzle velocity of about 2,809 feet per second. Okay, pretty quick. Uh, max range, this is what I think is kind of funny, the max range, because when we talk about the max effective range, this is one of those things that I've talked about, I've already mentioned this in our 6.5 video, and our 5.56 video. What is the definition of an effective range, right? So I talked about that a little bit earlier, and the DOD, the Department of Defense, states that the maximum effective range is the maximum distance at which a weapon may be expected to be accurate and achieve the desired effect. Every weapon system is going to have a different desired effect. I talked about that before, like, hey, your Tomahawk missile is going to have a different desired effect than your 7.62 NATO cartridge, right? Also, your Tomahawk missile is going to have a much longer range than your 7.62 NATO cartridge. So with that being said, what is what is the desired effect? To incapacitate your target, all right? We'll just look at it that way. Okay, great. So, max range for the 7.62 NATO cartridge is right around 4,180 yards. You might be thinking to yourself, wow, that's impressive. Right, but if you just shoot something at about a 40 degree angle and just go, right? Just go until gravity finishes you off, uh, then sure, right? 5.56, five, any other cartridge, anything you throw, if you throw that perfect angle is gonna go a further distance depending on how hard you throw the object, right? So as far as that bullet can travel is about 4,180 yards before it finally was like, okay, hello earth, I'm done, right? Okay, cool. But let's talk about uh, more of a precision cartridge. Let's talk about uh, the M118 LR. It's 175 grain projectile, uh, hollow point bow tail. It has a ballistic coefficient of a 0 .505. That's fantastic. Remember when I talked about ballistic coefficients before? If you missed that, uh, oh, that's okay. You can go back and watch that after this. But simply, what is a ballistic coefficient? It's the ability of a projectile, and it's, well, it's the ability of a projectile to be able to cut through the air, right? It's aerodynamics at the end of the day. Actually, I wrote down a much better uh, definition of that. The objective measure of an object's ability to overcome, overcome air resistance in flight. Okay, point, that's it. The higher your ballistic coefficient, the better. 
look at it that way, okay? There's not too many other projectiles within the uh, small arms community, right, that actually gets over like a 1.0, except for your 50 BMG. Awesome. Okay, great. So with that being said, if we look at the 175 grain hollow point boat tail M118 LR cartridge, which was something that was actually designed a little bit later, uh, more recently in the 308 or the 762 NATO's career, uh, it's pretty impressive really. And we're going to compare that to 308 Winchester 155 grain AMAX from Hornady. Now there are some other ones too that actually like kind of match that a little bit, but I wanted to go with something a little bit more common uh, compared to the M118 and whatnot, all right? So this is again, just for more information out there. We try to be as scientific as possible with the information that we've gathered all over the internet and everything else. But if you find this to be pretty interesting, let me know what other cartridges you'd like to see us take our time and do some homework on, all right? And of course, if our information is completely wrong, please let us know in the comment section, but I think we did a pretty good job on this. So with that being said, let's take a look at the M118 LR 175 grain. Muzzle velocity. 2,580 feet per second, all right? Muzzle energy, you're looking at about 2,605 foot-pounds of energy. Impressive, right? Remember what I said before, how there was, a, there was research gathered and research done that said in order to have, or pretty much the FBI said that the striking energy of about 57 foot-pounds of energy is the minimum to cause a disabling wound. Then there was research done by the NRA and other organizations that have pretty much had a general consensus that anywhere between 220 to 300 foot pounds of energy would be enough and sufficient enough to be able to use uh, in a self-defense situation. All right. So cool. So we average that out to be about 260 foot pounds of energy. Sweet. So at what point do we kind of get there? Well, 308 was, or 762 NATO was a little bit more difficult to get accurate readings on. So we did our best uh, guesstimates here today. And so we're going to go ahead and hop right into that. All right. Cool. So at 100 yards for the M118 LR, I've got notes for days on all this stuff here. We noticed that 100 yards, your muzzle energy is right around 2,247 feet per second. Compare that to the 308 Winchester 155 grain AMAX, ballistic coefficient of 0.405, still very, very good. Uh, what we got here at 100 yards is 2,397 feet per second. What you might be thinking is, hmm, that projectile, the M118, is heavier by 20 grains. Why, why is it not hitting as hard as the 155 grain AMAX? Velocity, at this point. At this point, velocity. What you'll notice is there's a trend happening that's pretty cool as we start to notice, and this is straight from Hornady, they have this entire spec sheet for all of the ammunition they produce, so this is pretty cool. And then the information we got on the M118 is coming from snipercentral.com, and they had all the cool testing to measure energy and all that type of stuff, so pretty fun. But what we notice here is the 155 grain AMAX will actually start to degrade quicker in energy than the 175 grain M118 LR, and the reason behind that is mass. Simply, no, I, I, exactly the reason behind that is mass. That projectile, the M118, even though it's gonna be traveling a little bit slower, it's a heavier round, and so whenever it makes impact on target, it's gonna have a little bit more energy transferred to the target. So again, a lot of fun, cool stuff, right? Okay, so continuing on from that, what we notice is there's that trend where it slowly degrades, and then the M118 doesn't degrade as much as the uh, AMAX 155 grain. Cool, so at what point do they actually like meet? right? And uh, what we found is 500 yards. 500 yards is the exact, they're, they're both the exact same. At 500 yards, they are both transferring energy at 1,225 foot-pounds of energy at the exact moment. That's okay, cool. So what that means is going beyond that, well, now, since you're going at a greater distance, 600 plus yards, the M118 is now carrying more energy behind it than what the 155 grain AMAX is. Okay, so at what point though is the M118 just kind of like meh? Well, I don't ever want to say it's just meh, like, yeah, you know, whatever, dude. If that's coming my way, I'm I'm just not going to worry about it. No, I still don't want to get shot, guys. I, I, don't, I don't care what it is. It could be a stun gun at point blank range. <sighs> Thanks, Katie, for that. Anyway, cool. So at 600 yards, we're reaching 1,037 foot-pounds of energy being transferred to target for the M118 LR. 700 yards, 877. 
what we're noticing here too is our percentage and difference or our, our, our percentage of decrease is very similar from each yard range, right? So from 500 to 600 yards, we're looking at 15.4% decrease to 1,037 uh, foot-pounds of energy, 1,225 at, at 500 yards. At 700 yards, we're at another 15.4, exactly, percent decrease at 877 foot-pounds. At 800 yards, we're at 15.3, dropped 0.1%. Right, 15.3 change or difference at 743 foot pounds of energy, and then we can just go straight to a thousand yards. We saw negative 13.8% at 547 foot pounds. So, again, continuing on with that trajectory as far as that negative 13.8%, we just kept adding that okay, minus 13.8% from 1,000 to 1,100 yards, we're getting at 471 feet, uh, foot pounds of energy. Cool. We continued again that entire theory on, and bam, 1,500 yards, we almost got exactly 260 foot pounds of energy. How accurate is that? Again, we don't know what exactly this projectile or this this cartridge would do between let's say maybe 13 to 1400 yards maybe it would actually drop off even more right and we kind of see that a little bit uh in some of these others we see that it's kind of like okay big difference big difference big difference Ooh, not as big difference not as big difference not as big difference it's almost like it hit between six to seven hundred yards i think it was where it really actually started to slow down the degraded degradation uh, so it actually didn't decrease in foot pounds of energy as much over a certain period of time or over a certain period of travel, I should say. So again, what we measured it out though was about 1500 yards, 260 foot pounds of energy. Why the 260 foot pounds of energy? Because again, the general consensus of being the average energy needed to be suitable in a self-defense situation. Oh, here comes the other comments. You're gonna use 308 for self-defense? Could, absolutely I could. Out to 1500 yards? Depends, are they shooting at me at, from 1,500 yards away? I'll shoot back, I mean, whatever, dude. Taking rounds is taking rounds, sending rounds is whatever. All right, anyway, and if your country's getting invaded, I'd consider that, you know, country defense. So. Anyway, all right, so continue, continuing on with the thought process, like I said, we found about 1,500 yards. Now, that kind of goes against what I originally thought with about the 6.5 Creedmoor. However, we were utilizing 140 grain 6.5 Creedmoor, which is a smaller diameter projectile, a lighter projectile, right? However, it moves faster. What I found was just because a projectile moves faster doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually going to be transferring more energy downrange. And that's what we found with the 155 grain AMAX. Again, at 500 yards, the 175 and 155 are doing the exact same energy transfer. Going beyond that, the, the M118LR, I'm pointing at that as if that's an actual M118LR, it's not, but the M118LR is carrying more energy. So, all that in mind, is the 6.5 Creedmoor actually better than 7.6 NATO or 308 Winchester downrange? According to what we've done here and the type of research that we've done, uh, no, it's not but it also depends on the actual ammunition that you're utilizing. If you're utilizing, again, the M118LR was completely designed for these types of effects at greater distances. Uh, the stuff that I was using, again, like the 140 grain Botel Hello Point, SMB 140 grain Botel Hello Point, a little bit different, does have a ballistic coefficient of 0.58, 0 0.580, so that's fantastic. But if we look at the, let me go back to the velocity and energy that we had at 400 yards, 1,379 foot-pounds of energy at 400 yards with 140 grain 6.5 Creedmoor. And then if we go to the 400 yards on the M118, we're at 1,436. So it's already beating it out there too. So just saying, mass equals more energy. You you would you combine that with a with high velocity, it's going to be detrimental. It's going to be traumatic, to say the least, on target. So, what's the effective range of 308? What we found, or 7.62 what we found was about 1,500 yards. Max effective range, 1,500 yards. That does not mean that you can't shoot it beyond that. That does not mean that it won't be incapacitating beyond that. I've seen videos, I've seen it in person, where people are shooting over 2,000 yards 
with a 308. Like, what? So it's completely capable of reaching targets and still incapacitating a target way beyond that. Again, just going off of the statistics that I was given here and what we kind of uh, came up here with, uh, that is ultimately our take on it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below because, well, again, this is a lot of fun. In my mind, I think this is just very cool. Now, will we get to the point on this channel to where we can actually scientifically and, and accurately measure the energy out at that great of a distance? We're going to have to find a shooter good enough to do that because I probably can't. Um, uh, but uh, to be able to actually hit the target at these distances that we're talking about, I, I totally could. It just might take... A more than a couple of tries. But uh, anyway, will we get there? Uh, eventually. Right now, we're uh, not making any money on this channel. We're not monetized or anything. So uh, what we're bringing to you right now is, well, that level of quality, right? You guys are enjoying these so far. So let me know down in the comment section what other cartridges do you want to see us test and shoot and have fun with and then get all scientists, scientific with and whatnot. Let me know. Uh, but in the meantime, head on over to classicfarms.com to check out all of our uh, all of our offerings. We have ammunition for sale. We've also got firearms for sale and range gear and apparel and everything you need to celebrate and exercise your Second Amendment rights. And that also includes free guns, like our current giveaway, also chambered in 7.62 NATO, hence why we did this whole video. Uh, the SCAR-20, this is a fantastic system. Maybe not Katie's favorite, but her opinion doesn't always matter. I can say that because she's not standing right next to me and I'm safe from danger. Just, just making sure I was expecting the door to swing open. But uh, anyway, so what we've got going on with this guy, the SCAR 20, 20 inch cold hammer forged barrel, Surefire Pro Comp, two chamber brake, absolutely love. Agutac bipod, these bipods are ridiculously robust and heavy, uh, but they are awesome. I mean, if you wanted to, you know, it's got a QD detachment on it or a QD mount on it. If you wanted to take that off and beat the crap out of somebody with it, you could totally do that. I uh, wouldn't advise it unless they deserve it. But uh, anyway, angled foregrip on here because ergonomics. Uh, feels great. Adjustable gas block, as you can see, monolithic upper receiver and rail. Uh, this is the non-reciprocating charging handle model. So you don't have to worry about that guy eating up your thumb or your knuckles or anything like that. Thanks, FN. Uh, on top of that, it comes factory uh, with the precision rifle stock and the hogue over mold grip and also to the geisley super scar trigger love that trigger that's uh katie's favorite thing hence why the code word is super so there you go the optic on this guy is the eotech voodoo first focal plane three and a half to 18 power optic this is one of my favorite scopes it just it rocks it's awesome and um I think some of you guys have asked too, like, because uh, this is an MOA scope, some of you are asking like, hey, what's the difference between like a mil and an MOA? Stay tuned, we'll have that video coming out. Uh, I just wanna make sure that we're giving you all the right research and information, so I'll probably have Matt on that one. But uh, anyway, what else does this guy come with? Um, it comes with a 10 round mag out of the box, but we're gonna include a 20 round mag, because America. And uh, anyway, they're both low capacity in my mind, so that's not that big of a deal. But uh, anyway, I mentioned this in the giveaway video, but I want to reiterate it. If you live in a state that uh, this isn't compliant in, that's okay. Still feel free to enter, refer your friends that might be in those states and whatnot. Uh, we will work with you. We will either get you something of equal value. Uh, we will send you out a compliant one. If there is a model that fits that criteria, we'll work with you. Feel free to enter. Don't feel hindered or uh, you know unable to do so because of it. So enter away. Anyway, I'll leave it off there. I can't wait to see you guys down in the comments section below all about 7.62 NATO and how awesome of a cartridge it really is. I, it is one of my absolute favorite cartridges, but I might enjoy shooting 6.5 Creed more and more. But I, at the end of the day, I think I'd still go with 7.62 NATO if I had to choose between the one or two because availability, cost, and different firearms that, the multitude of firearms that shoot this cartridge. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know. Guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at ClassicFarms.com.